All right, we are live. Um, here I am, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is Brian S. Arnold here with the Authority Builders Academy, here with the show we call The Authority Project. You are the project, and we want to put attach authority to your name so you can sell what you're great at. We are um, awaiting our guest today, Brandon Garrett. He is currently right now on a on a closing call, uh, but he's going to be in very shortly here. So um, just bear with us for a little for a little while, and we'll get this started uh, right away for you here. Um, meanwhile, I got to go do, do some small talk, I guess. <laughs> so if you haven't heard of the Authority Builders Academy and you want to get involved, uh, what it is is a, a place on Facebook. You search through Facebook. Search Authority Builders Academy. Uh, you can also find it with my name, Brian S. Arnold, as well. And get in, get in there. We're 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 getting in guests with high high level coaching for you there, um, as well as my little my processes as well. You get to learn what I'm going to show you very shortly about developing your authority um, for your. In particular niche, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're an artist, uh, a blogger, writer, musician, whatever you are, if you create, the place is for you. We want to develop your authority and develop your your work ethic, your 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 positioning to be an authority in your field. So that is what's happening with with the with the authority builds academy i hope you come in and join in check us out for a couple, couple of weeks see what you think um if it's not for you obviously you can feel free to remove yourself it's not a problem at all um, but i thank you uh for coming in here now we have our guest coming in here coming in now very shortly here i'm gonna push push him in just a moment just a moment here and there he is can you hear hey, me hey how we doing good to see you brian doing good Good, good. I see you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thanks for coming in here. Yeah, Tell me a little bit here. here. <laughs> but uh, but great. I hope that the car went well. Uh, yes, yes, it did. We're moving forward to a call too. Potentially, potentially, a great opportunity to bring a fantastic wellness product to to more people and change some lives. Good stuff. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great. So um, I already went through my introduction. So we're ready to go. Uh, our guest today is the Brandon Garrett, and he is the. Um, I, I got I got so many so many different nicknames for you right now. I don't want to, let me just tell, I'm just going to give it to you. Just tell us first of all who you are personally and who you are professionally. We'll take yeah, there, yeah, we can start with that. So uh, my name is is Brandon Garrett. Uh, I'm the most exciting thing I think that I'm involved in right now. Uh, you know, Brian mentioned the the, the call that I was on. Uh, it was for a company I'm a part of called Closers Club. I'm the executive director of operations there. We're a remote professional high ticket closing agency. We help businesses uh, of all kinds, all industries, coaches, consultants, even traditional businesses um, scale their revenue, grow their impact um, through leveraging our, our high ticket sales professionals. Um, colloquially, I'm known as the insurance doctor and game over closer. Uh, I own a consulting business and also an employee health insurance brokerage, which is how I got started into entrepreneurship actually. And Father of two, uh, avid motorcycle rider and musician. Awesome! Oh, I didn't know you were a musician. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, that's actually how my wife and I met. Uh, my wife and I met when she came and auditioned for my band. <laughs> really? Yep. What do you play? Uh, we play. Uh, we've been on a break for quite a while, um, mm -hmm. but traditionally when we were, we're playing, you know, just cover band. Um, so yeah. top, any top forty, that's what gets you booked at bars because it's just a hobby. It's not anything to yeah. really make any money at, right? So you kind of <laughs> you want to get booked at a at a decent bar, not a dive bar. You need to right. be, able to be a, a live jukebox, so to speak, because otherwise they've got the the iTunes thing with it on the wall that people can you know play what they want to. So you really got to be willing to play a little bit of everything, even if it's not. Yeah, in your bag. <laughs> exactly. I know how. To, I know exactly what you mean. Awesome stuff. So let's get started here. So. I don't even know where, where we're gonna where we're gonna begin, uh, I, but I do want to touch on something that you were speaking speaking of earlier on your on your in your Facebook group about um, the differences and the importance of being a salesperson as opposed to being a closer. Because mm. I have these I have all these negative thoughts about being a sales salesperson. 
like I hate being a salesy kind of guy, uh-huh. but you kind of kind of got me into maybe the betterment of being a, a closer as opposed to being a sales. I didn't even think there was a difference. So, <laughs> so tell us, inform us what that yeah, means. Yeah, so that's that's a very common thing. I and mean, if you don't mind me asking, like, what what do you feel like? What's your biggest negative or limiting belief about sales? Um, being maybe pushy mm-hmm. or not really caring about the customer saying, you know, they just trying to see you as a, as, as a piece of data and not mm. a real person. Right. Right. And does that stem from like some personal experiences you've had? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, car, yes. car lot, the lady at the mall trying to put lotion on your hands, that kind car of stuff, lot, right? even, even, uh, even, you know, recently just people, a lot of people were trying to sell me. <laughs> they see, mm. they, they see your, they see your, your information there. Oh, maybe, maybe wants this, needs this, needs that. It's like, okay, right. wait a minute. You know, you know, I don't even know if I'm your target market yet. I don't even know if I really raised my, you know, raise my <laughs> hand to say, I want your product or whatever. So, I'm right. just, you know, but it comes with the territory, which is okay. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's very, that's very common, Brian. I mean, I, I even personally went through uh, my own transformation and had to overcome those limiting beliefs because I grew up um, with kind of that mindset that not that sales is like a dirty profession, but that you had to be cautious, right? right? Like the salesperson doesn't have your best interest in mind. They're trying to get one over on you. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I left my my corporate uh, positions, I was in corporate America for over 15 years in various levels of leadership before mm-hmm. I jumped off the entrepreneur cliff and started building the plane on the way down and realized, I don't know a whole lot about sales as I'm starting this insurance company. Um, and so the biggest breakthroughs I had on my sales journey was that mindset, that breakthrough. And that's really what separates a closer from a salesperson. Um, you know, the, the, there's certain industries, I'm not going to call anyone out for, for example, <laughs> but uh, anybody that's online on this broadcast, uh, you know, that, that has Facebook or has LinkedIn can probably pinpoint a few industries where this is very common. Uh, you get a connection and you just like, you hesitate to click accept. You're like, Oh, and then like 30 seconds later, there's a pitch in your inbox, right? right. That's a salesperson. That's not a closer. Okay. Uh, a closer really is, is someone that, they they do sell you stuff, but it's not really that they're selling you stuff. They're taking on a, a consultative role, a coaching role, uh, and trying to identify is the product or service that we're on the phone or in person, you know, having a conversation about, is it ultimately going to impact your life in a positive fashion? And if it is, it's my job as a closer to help you see that and come to your own conclusion and make an informed decision about whether you want to move forward or not. Um, because ultimately at the end of the day, people love to buy, they hate to be sold. Uh, and the mindset and the intention that you have going into the call completely sets the tone for that. And that's one key thing that sets a closer apart from a salesperson. Awesome. Awesome. So how, how do you go about figuring out, you know, the, you know, the process of being a, being a closer where I know you, you talked about, and I heard you before, like trying to figure out who they are, or is it conversation? How, how does that mm-hmm. process work as far as the process of being a closer? So it, traditionally in sales, um, or, or even with, within, within being a closer, right, the, the, the sales process is all about the prospect. You'll hear that said a lot. Like if you're only talking about your product or service, really all you're effectively doing is talking about yourself. And that's not going to get you the sale. So while we'll, while as a closer, we will we will maintain that frame and that mindset that this that the sales process is all about their buyer's journey. It really starts internally with me before I even get on that call. What am I? What what mindset? What, what's my mindset? What's my intention with this call? What are my limiting beliefs that I have that I might be projecting onto the prospect through my tonality, my word patterns, and things like that? That's where you have to start owning your process, sales process as a closer versus just being a salesperson because you may be inadvertently creating objections that the prospect would not have otherwise had because it's a belief that you have that mm. because of your tonality and the words that you use, the prospect suddenly goes in their mind goes, oh my gosh, you're right. And then the objection comes up. And because <laughs> you have that limiting belief in your mind, now you're panicking because you don't know how to overcome that objection because you hold that limiting belief yourself. Awesome. So we might as well just stay right there. <laughs> Overcoming objections. It's a big, <laughs> big thing, right? Right. I mean, we hear all the time. Um, how 
How do we do that? I'll just, I'll just put it that put it like that. How do we do that? <laughs> so that's a very broad topic, right? And yeah. I, you know, it's important to have the skill of overcoming objections, but I think more importantly, and and what helps a lot of people in their sales process is to understand that your pitch, so to speak, um, needs to be designed and crafted very intentionally in such a way that you're overcoming objections before they're ever raised. So, and that starts, that starts when your client, your prospect immediately becomes acquainted with your product or service or who you are. And so that first touch point may very well be the marketing message, the ad, the whatever it is. There's a lot of objections that can be overcome through good written copy in an ad or a post or a video, a short video sales letter or testimonial video that you'll find that there's only really a handful of objections that really, really matter. And even then it's just smoke and mirrors because people are looking for a reason not to buy. Anytime they get on the phone, more often than not, they are looking for a reason not to buy from you. And it's your job as a closer to, to paint that picture and build that bridge that they see, Hey, if I, if I trust this person enough that the value that they've given me, I can safely walk across this bridge from where I'm at now to the result that I'm wanting to get. And that bridge is built on the product or service that we're discussing. And once you've done that, the objections become completely irrelevant. Awesome. So let's let's talk about fear, which is one of my big things. Uh-huh. Fear of of asking for the sale. I guess that's, that's I guess it's kind of a you know in between between being a salesman and I guess the close. I guess I would I think maybe, but mm-hmm. fear of asking for the sale, and I guess also making your offer worth that person's time. I guess, I guess all, I, I guess that kind of, in, maybe that encompasses everything maybe possibly. Uh-huh. So, yeah. yeah. So, so the root of the question, I think, you know, you, you touched on it, it's fear, but what fear of what, what are we actually dealing with? We're dealing with a fundamental primal fear as a species of the, of the fear of rejection, right? It's not that, it's not that I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of actually asking the sale. I'm, I'm afraid of being rejected and that stems from the fact that I'm attaching my value, my worth as a closer, as a person to the outcome of that sale, because I feel like I need to sell this product or service. And that stems very much from the primal portion of our brains. When we were hunter gatherers, you know, we are a social species. And so rejection from another member of the species, it really elicits some, some primer physiology in your <laughs> body um, that, that your brain doesn't know any different that, Hey, this prospect's going to tell me no, or, oh my gosh, there's a saber-toothed tiger. Well, there is no yeah. saber-toothed tiger anymore, right? right. Um, so that's what that fear stems around. And that actually can be overcome and ties back to your mindset. You need to be unattached to the sale uh, itself when you're on the call. Your goal on the call isn't to, to close the prospect. Your goal is to close the prospect on taking action based on an informed decision that is going to leave them better than when you found them. Sometimes that means they do buy from you. You make that offer, uh, you in, give them the invitation to purchase, right? Um, and they make that decision or they make the decision not to. But if you've done your job as a closer, that decision not to is still going to leave them better than when you found them because it may not be the right time. It, there, there may be some very valid reasons that they just can't right now. Um, and you're better off to build that relationship and plant those seeds that you can then water or nurture and come back later. I've seen that happen numerous times where it's a no now. Um, and I personally have rejected clients like, you know, I don't, I understand you're wanting to move forward. I'm really not comfortable, um, you know, letting you move forward. I just don't see that you're a fit at this time. I think if we were to work on A, B, and C and get X result, then you would be in a position to be a good fit. And guess what? Six months later, that person came back and said, Hey, I really appreciate you telling me no, because I would have fallen on my face. I'm ready to move forward now. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love it. I love it. So do you think that some of this, some of this uh, taking out the fear or, or helping the sale is a part of having a great offer. Is that part of, of, of it at all? That, that is, that is part of it. Um, and that goes into the messaging, right? And, and that if the offer isn't right, the messaging is not right. It's going to be a difficult process um, because you're going to be getting all kinds of prospects in that may not necessarily be qualified, but if the offer is right, the messaging is right. Um, you're still going to have to do some work there. You know, maybe I should take this opportunity to dispel this myth. Um, There there are one call closes. There are lay down prospects 
Right. But those are those are the unicorn prospects. Though that's the exception, not the norm. Yeah. Um, and the, and that's been propagated throughout the sales industry because people don't realize the amount of work that very very skilled sales professional closers put into that one call that you see them make or that one time they're sitting down with a customer in a dealership and getting a sale. You know the stereotypical car salesman that he only works you know four months out of the year, takes the rest of the year off, and he works by appointment only. It took him 10 or 15 years to build that up. Right. Um, and you have to put the you have to put the time in as a sales professional. It, it is a skill just like anything else. And if you want to be at the top of your game, if you want to be Peyton Manning, if you want to be <laughs> Tom Brady, if you want to be M Michael Phelps, like those yeah. guys are putting in 8, 10, 12, 14 hours a day honing their craft. That's why they're able to do what they do. And a, a professional closer that makes it look easy, it's because they're actually paddling like crazy. You know, the, the, the duck picture, right? The duck is all <laughs> on the water, but down below he's doing this, right? It's the same, right. it's the same thing. It's an, it's an intellectual sport and skill that you have to, you have to go after every day. Awesome. Give me one second here. I got allergies today. Oh goodness. <laughs> and the strong today. Sorry about that. I don't want you to see that. There you go. <laughs> Strong allergies today. Anyway, so so we got that. We we have a we have a, a good sense of the importance of everything as far as being a closer. Can you give us some strategies? Because because from what you just said, it seems like it might be you know is it going to take me ten years to be good at this, or is this something I can do right now to say hey I can bring up my inner closer right now. Right. Um, no, that's a very good question. And, uh, you know, let me, I'm going to look over here on my other screen. Sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I've only been in full-time sales space for about two and a half years now. Okay. Uh, and in that time span, you know, I've, I've grown a lot. I've been exposed to fantastic individuals. You know, I've won awards and shared the stage with people like Dan Locke, you know, Jordan, I've worked with Jordan Belfort. I, I've talked to Jordan Belfort on numerous occasions. He's, you know, uh, he's aligned with Closers Club on some projects this year. It's just been a phenomenal explosion of growth, but that has only happened because I did, I did the foundational work when I first got started. Uh, and that ties back to what I was talking about earlier with the mindset. And even though the sale process is about the buyer, uh, is about the prospect, it, it all starts with you and your internal work. Um, I, I had no experience in sales when I got into when I when I left my job, really? other than a brief stint during the summer in college when I sold cars, and okay. I completely sucked at it. Uh, <laughs> I failed miserably. It was a hundred percent commission sales role, and I drew out before the summer was even over. Um, so you know, I had some severe limiting beliefs and stuff that I had to overcome. Um, and then as I started investing myself in learning and training my my mind to to have the right skill set and the right approach. Um, my very first sale was a three location nursing home facility, assisted living facility, where I wrote almost fifty thousand dollars in insurance premium, netting me um, about a fifteen or twenty thousand dollar commission. That was the very first sale I'd ever had in my life. My second sale was a two hundred sixty two thousand uh, dollar twenty business acquisition. Um, so it doesn't take years, um, but you got to be willing to do the work, and you have to start. You got to start in, in here. Um, cause you're in business. If you're going to be, a, if you're going to be a closer, you have to be a closer. You can go be a salesperson. I can wake up in the morning. I can put on my jacket. I can go to the dealership. I can go into the office if I'm a you know real estate agent or an insurance agent, whatever it may be. And I can be a salesperson. Being a closer is not something that you do. Being a closer is something that you are. It's about influence. It's about psychology. It's about wanting to have a positive impact. You can, my, my wife is a closer could honestly run circles around me as a closer, but she doesn't do sales. She's mm. a physical therapist and a very, very, very good one. Um, one of only 300 in the United States that have some of the credit has one of the credentials that she has. Mm. She's, I say she's a closer because every day she is literally influencing people to endure physical pain mm. to get the result that they want, not emotional pain or some, or the pain of a limiting belief that we have mentally. She's mm. closing people on, actual physical pain <laughs> to get what the result that they want. Um, yeah. And that's because of her mindset that she truly believes in what she's doing and that her skill set allows you to help people. That's what it means to be a closer. And you can start doing that um, with three things. And I talk about them in my book. Yeah. Um, 
so you, you need to you need to activate your higher self and your your inner closer by starting addressing your your mindset and the limiting beliefs that aren't serving you. So like for you, Brian, you know, um, you mentioned you had some very that's very specific ones surrounding sales. Write those down and ask yourself, you know, does this really serve me? And if not, why do I believe it? And then start evaluating, okay, well, what what belief can I replace this with? Because that's what it is. It's it's created a pathway in your brain. And the only way to start overcoming that is to replace that belief with a new one um, through affirmations, through training. It, it's a lot of work, right? But that's how you do it um, is, is starting right there. Um, and then once you've done that, you're going to be cultivating that relationship with your 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 higher self, your inner closer, because it's going to be something new, right? Even though it's it's going to be different, that's what's going to make it scary. Even though it's healthy, it's different. And so we're, we're going to have that that lower self crop up, those negative beliefs are going to come back. That that little demon on the shoulders is being like, oh, no, you're so full of it. You can't do this, right? And you have to be like, no, I, I, I got this. And just keep pushing forward. You have to you have to continually step into that version of yourself every single day and every single opportunity that you can. Um, and then you have to give yourself permission. You got to empower yourself. Give yourself permission to be a closer. You have to just decide, you know what? Like It, it is okay for me to talk to Edna at the grocery store. Because you may find out if you're a closer that Edna hasn't talked to her daughter in 20 years and Edna could be on her, you know, Edna could be, you know, aging and dying and you could very well change her life <clears throat> by influencing her to reach out to her estranged daughter and completely rebuild their relationship. A salesperson would never do that. A salesperson would just stand in line. A closer would take that opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. But you got to, you got to come, come from the right place uh, in here. And that starts really every morning, very first thing. Um, and I go into depth and detail in that in my book, Cracking the Code to Your Inner Closer. Um, I go over three quick little steps um, that you can do, but really it's about having, you know, 10 or 15 minutes in the morning of dedicated time to do some inner self work. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I put some resources in that book to, to, to help everyone out, but it starts with, you know, having some silence, like having some gratitude, um, and then addressing those things as they come up to, you know, does this thought serve me? Uh, is it getting me towards my goals? And then how, how you deal with that and move forward. Awesome. Awesome. Let me try to get one more question in before we go here. Uh -huh. um, what, uh, what if somebody just, just is just so afraid or just, just has this fear that they can't do it. You know, it's just like, it's just, they, they can't, they can't, see themselves being that kind of person mm -hmm. for any kind of experience or, or they had before. And they just rather, it, it is, I think people have to understand that it's, it's, it's some, some part of it has to be necessary. Mm -hmm. you, know <laughs> you got to sell in some way. Um, right. So can you address that, that problem where it's just like, they feel like this can never be something that they can be um, a part of or, or be that kind of person. Right. Yeah, because um, that that's a very real that's a very very real and a very deep fear for a lot of people and a, a deep belief. Um, and you kind of touched on on the way out. I, I don't think you realize yeah. it. It's it's recognizing that you you are selling every day. You are influencing every day. If you're a parent, do you want your kids to do your chore their chores or not? Do you want them to get their homework done or not? Guess what? You're either closing them, influencing them <laughs> to go do their chores, or they're closing you on why they're not going to do them. Great point. And that's, that's a very fundamental example. And people scoff at that a lot of times when I use that example, but it's the truth, Brian. Like you yeah. have to be, sales is about influence and pe helping people understand why they need to do something and what, what it is is going to benefit them because everyone tunes into one radio station in life and that radio station is WIIFM. What is in it for me? If right. you can tune into that radio station and direct that broadcast in a way that they know that they're going to be better for having tuned in, then you start to move through that process. Um, but that belief doesn't serve us, right? You, you, so you've got to start small with your kids or with a coworker. You know, can I get my can I can I get my coworker to cover a shift that I need covered because I have a doctor's appointment? That's mm -hmm. all closing. You start small with little areas of your life that you're already comfortable with and acknowledge that hey. In this area of my life, I am a closer. And then once you've gotten comfortable with that, you know that that's where the empowerment piece comes, the cultivating the relationship with your inner closer and empowering yourself to step fully into being a closer every single day, every single situation. 
And you can't do that until you first closed yourself. You've got to close yourself on right. being who you truly are. And at everyone's core, there is a closer of some type. Like my wife, for example, phenomenal physical therapist. She's a closer every day. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, okay. That's that's where you really that's where you really got to start, and you've got to be okay with being uncomfortable. You got to be comfortable being uncomfortable because everything that you want, Brian, yeah, is outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, everything you want is outside your comfort zone. What you have now is what you're comfortable is is a result of what you're comfortable with. So if you want, uh, you know, that shiny car, or you want that vacation to, you know, Jamaica or whatever it might be, <laughs> it's likely outside your comfort zone. So how bad do you want it? You know, are you willing to be, are you willing to be uncomfortable to go get it? And then once you've done it, guess what? That becomes your new comfort zone. That becomes your new normal. But yeah. you have to be willing to push yourself because that's the only way you're going to get there. And the only way to be willing to step outside your comfort zone is to close yourself first. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to try to push you one, one, one more question before we yeah, go. Go ahead. I'm going to push you one more question. Is there a power in, I'm not, I don't want to, if, if it's if it's too revealing, then don't do it. But if there is there like a power question that you give to your customers that when you say it, you think this is this is going to really con convert them to to the sale, or um, no? You know, I don't I I don't think there's any one magic pill. Okay. Um, the sales process is a very fluid process, uh, so that's why skilled sales professionals. Um, are who and what and where they are because they they've taken the Bruce Lee approach to learning. They they've continued to to learn as much as they can. They they pick the tools, the techniques, the strategies, the language patterns, the tonality that resonates with them and the ones that don't, they get rid of because what may work for me as a closer and my closing style and my personality may not work for you. Um, so it's really that trial and error process and again going back to the fear and the discomfort, Pete, right? You've got to be willing to fail, but don't look at it as failing. Look at it as an exp a lab experiment. Like, hey, I'm going to focus on these this type of tonality at this portion of the call, and I'm going to do it until I get enough feedback to see whether or not it works for me. Uh, and you can do that just by deciding, hey, I heard so-and-so do X, Y, and Z. I really like that. That, that, that means it's resonating with you. Yeah. Use it, implement it, try it. That's yeah. the only way you're, you're, you're going to develop your style, your persona of being a closer. I love it. All right. I got you. That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, we're going to end, end it right there. I, I, I appreciate your questions. I think people, uh, I think I love, I, I hope pe people see this kind of thing. People were thinking there's a, like you said, there's an easy pill. There's a, there's a just a push button <laughs> way to do, do everything. And it's never the case. It is absolutely never the case. So I appreciate that. Please tell us right now where people can, can find you and your resources. Yeah. So you can, you mentioned my, my Facebook group, which is Agents Closing Emporium. That's here on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, just type Agents Closing Emporium in the search bar. You'll find me. You can search my name, um, Brandon Garrett, on Facebook and you'll find me. You can also use the Game Over Closer or the Insurance Doctor uh, to find me as well on LinkedIn and Facebook also. Awesome. Awesome. And that, I think that's just about a wrap. You can come and find us there at the Authority of Builders Academy once, one more time for more free trainings when you just search that wherever you go. Please follow this man. He knows his stuff. He's the real deal. Um, check him out for sure. And um, hopefully maybe we'll have him back for something a little more for our group if we get in there. I'm going hey, to convince, try to convince him. That, you're going to have to close me. Gonna have yes, to close exactly. Me. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> All right. So that is the show for the Authority Project for today. You are the project. We want to attach authority to your name so you can say what you're great at. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming in one more time. Love you. Be blessed. Hold on with me for yeah. real, real quick, Brandon.